everybody, it's Renee from Tailspin Farm and I am hopping on today. It is Tuesday and we are going to do some yarn dyeing um, and fiber dyeing today. I had a few comments and questions in regards to one of my posts last week and I realized it has been either probably close to five years since I've talked about yarn dyeing on the um, channel here. And when I did it last time, I didn't show you how I dyed my Angora. I simply showed you my mistake that I had made, which was I felted my Angora that time. And I wanted to run through the simple process that I use to dye my fibers. We are in my kitchen today. Hopefully we don't get interrupted. Um, and I have, um, I'm gonna just run through what I have that I use. Let me start off this video by saying I am not particularly scientific about this. Um, there are much wiser people than me to watch if you really want to, want to get into your yarn dyeing um, in regards to very specifics and the science behind it. Um, I tend to just throw things in a pot and see what happens. Um, and I don't even, a lot of times I don't measure. Um, I'm, I don't do mass produced stuff where I wanna keep reproducing it over and over again. That's one of the reasons why I'm not um, as particular. So I do very small batches. I raise Angor rabbits and that is mainly the fiber that I have and use. Um, although I do spin and use other fibers also. Um, right now that, that is my main um, source. And so mine are always small batch fibers, yarns um, that I dye. And it usually is for a particular reason. Um, I have had orders in the past where people will say, can I have this um, scarf in pink or can I have this hat in blue? And that's, that's what I do. Um, very small, usually one skein at a time. So today I'm going to take, I have this white um, spun yarn. It's all Angora. It's from my white rabbit, obviously. We're going to dye this and I'm also going to dye fiber. So I have a big batch of very light gray fiber that we will dye um, and see how it turns out. The only other thing you need, and, and this again, um, you don't have to be overly um, specific with this. I started out dyeing yarn, yarns with the um, Wilton cake, de cake Gel Dyes. Say that five times fast. Um, you can get those like at Hobby Lobby, you can get them at Walmart, and they make very beautiful colors. Let me have a car come by here. Sorry, the windows are open today. It is very beautiful here in Michigan. Um, finally, it's not 112 degrees in the shade. So all the windows are open today. We're just going to deal with it. Um, so the, um, okay, then my phone started ringing. Um, so like I was saying, the uh, Wilton cake gel dyes work perfectly. Um, you can go to Walmart. You can go to Hobby Lobby. You could grab a skein of white Red Heart Yarn or whatever brand, you can get some of that. The other thing you will need is a pot and some vinegar. And you could, this is a great experiment to do with kids, um, especially if you're using the Wilton Cake dyes. Those are non-toxic. I mean, those are edible. So those are um, really easy to use. You can use all of those in a canning jar with, um, the, the yarn stuffed in the canning jar with the vinegar and the gel and you can heat it in your microwave and do it that way. You can use the sun and do it uh, solar dyeing. So there are lots of different options you can do. Um, today we're just going to do, um, I use Jacquard acid dyes. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Um, this is a teal color. And again, I have my vinegar. I have a pot of water boiling here on the stove. Once you um, use your pot and your spoons. Don't use them for anything else. Keep these designated as yarn dyeing um, equipment. And again, not necessarily with the Wilton dyes, but any of the acid dyes or anything like that you need to be careful with. Um, some people wear masks 
and gloves. I do not. Um, I've just done this so many times that I just don't anymore. Um, and it's, you'll see, it's a pretty simple process. So I'm looking for um, just a, a regular light teal color today. So once this gets heated up, and you can use other options you have with dyeing, which is going to change the colors of your, your dyeing process. And again, this is just a very quick, simple um, explanation video on, on dyeing yarn already spun and then the fiber not spun. But you can use different mordants, which will um, set your dye to your fiber. And when you use different mordants, you're also going to get different colors. Um, so there are some great books out there. I'll have to try to remember to link some of my yarn dyeing books down below. But for now, we are just going to simply put, I'm going to turn you here, and we're going to take the yarn, and this isn't quite boiling yet, but we're going to get it soaking. Um, I don't even measure my vinegar at this point. I can kind of um, just put a couple of pours in and I know whether or not I have enough. Angora is slightly water repellent um, and so it takes a minute for it to get all the way saturated. And then I don't do this in per any particular order either. I get my yarn wet and pour like two pours. And you can always add more as you go along. You can add more vinegar, you can add more dye also. And then I am going to, let's get this stirred up just a little bit. The other thing you wanna watch for is the, I always tie off my skeins with um, ties. If they are really tight, you're gonna to wanna to replace those with something looser because um, that will give you a white mark where your ties are. So these are pretty loose. So I'm going to leave them for now. We'll see if I have to, um, towards the end of this, I will move these a little bit, but they're fairly loose. So I'm not too worried about it. And we can always fix that later also. So once this gets in here, and let me turn the angle on this camera here real quick, and I'm going to move you to this other side so you can see what I'm doing in here. Okay guys, I've got you switched. You can see right in my pot. Um, I am just gonna take probably not even a half a teaspoon and I am going to sprinkle this all over. And you can see right away the Angora picks it up. Um, so one of the beauties of Angora fiber is it does pick up color very easily and very quickly. Um, if you find that your fiber isn't picking up color, you might not have enough vinegar um, in the pot yet. And so you remember you can always add more vinegar to have that, um, to help that grab onto there. And you can see that the yarn, the white yarn changed pretty quickly. We're gonna let it soak in here though. Um, let me get a glass. I wanna show you the amount of fiber, or of color that's left in the fiber. Let me just use something that I can throw away. I don't. So there's still quite a bit of color in here and um, my yarn has already picked up quite a bit of color. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna let this soak for a while. And I, this is really the color that I want. I want just a light teal color, just like that. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna let this sit here and um, keep the oven on and let it boil until it is pretty set on there. And then I will show you how I'm gonna add fiber to the same pot to dye the fiber. So let's come right back. Okay guys, I'm back. Um, this is pretty much the color that I wanted. It does look a little bit dark on the video. It's a lighter teal. And I am going to simply pull it out. I 
have a pan here with a um, <laughs> yeah one of those dishes you know the word um, a strainer dish in the pan and I'm gonna take this over to the sink and I will rinse it out and wash it I use um, soak wash fiber wash you want to be careful um, washing going from hot don't go to cold make sure your water is about the same temperature otherwise you will felt things that's that will get you in trouble so if you can see let me grab my little thing here I still have some color in this pot and I am going and if you remember I only put like a teeny tiny end it wasn't even a half a teaspoon maybe a quarter teaspoon of the dye um, and so I'm gonna just add this is just clipped fiber um, from one of my Angoras and this has a fairly nice staple length on it uh, let's see if I can show you some of the pieces are you know a couple inches long I'm just gonna put this in here and we're gonna see what happens this is a mix it's actually one rabbit but she has dark and light on her you can see um, some of her color is a little bit darker a little bit lighter we're just gonna throw a handful in here and this is where Angora takes a few minutes to absorb the color we're just going to get this in here and it's already picking up the coloring Now the thing with the clipped fiber, you want to make sure you're kind of pulling all of the uh, pull all the pieces and parts apart. Um, the gray, the darker gray, you can see the lighter gray still is a little bit light, and the darker gray is picking up the color right away. And that will show anytime you dye um, like a gray a gray fiber or a gray mixed where it's darker and lighter, you're gonna see some of those variances in it. Um, and so I'm just going to play with this a little bit and I did want to check, let me check on the other fiber where I had my knot tied, my strings tied, if I don't burn my finger on this, if I can find it, let me get a pair of tongs and I want to make sure that where my knot is, why I can't find it, my knot must have been white because it's dyed, there it is, it was black. And you can see, let's see if I can get you to see this, um, there is no white in there underneath, so it, was, it wasn't tied too tight where it was going to um, create a problem. <clears throat> so that's all good. And this, if I need to, I can add more color to this. And this is how I would dye my raw fiber. Just clipped or combed straight from the rabbit into the pot. I don't wash it before. I will wash it afterwards. And essentially, that's what you're gonna get. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take the strainer and I will pull all of this out from the pot take it right to the sink and wash it and then I will oops, and then I will card it from there so I will card it after it dries um, I will dry this simply by putting it on a screen or in a basket out on the deck in the Sun and that will dry it right up um, and that's pretty much it wipe this up on dying it's real simple this only took me um i don't know 10 15 minutes to do uh, most of this and then the the longest part is just letting it sit in the dye bath to um, absorb all the dye i'll probably let this sit a few minutes longer i'm going to rinse this out with my soak and wash it and then i will hang it hang it out um outside to dry so that's the process I use for both my yarn and my fiber. Um, it's, there is no difference in it, and you can usually dye it back to back um, with, like I said, whatever's left in the pot, you can throw something else in. Now, if I wanted to do another um, 
if I wanted to do another skein of yarn, I could also add that in. Um, I could have done a second skein into this. So everything. And if you notice the, I don't know if you can, oh yeah, you can tell. The fiber and the yarn is almost exactly the same color. So there was enough dye in there. I am gonna let this soak a little bit longer. I don't know if you can see, but there are some white right here. Yeah, you can see that. So I'm gonna let this sit um, and fully um, absorb all the dye. The, uh, like I said, with Angora, it is water, not waterproof, but it is water resistance to some degree. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I am on Facebook and Instagram at Tailspin Farm. If you like this video, click the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I would love that. Um, I hope to keep making week weekly videos for you. Also, if you head over to my webs website, words are hard today, um, at www.tailspinfarm.com, I now have um, an email set up there where you can put your email in. And I am doing... Um, blog post now and I will also be sending out coupons for some of my products and yarns and things like that. So if you are interested, head over there and fill out the form and I hope you guys have a great Tuesday. Bye.